Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Jacksoft to another adventure. So earlier this year, I was down in Salinas and I went to go check out the Chad Town down there. But to this day, that was the most ghetto Chad Town I have ever seen. That place was completely overran by homelessness and drugs. But recently, someone left me a message and told me that that place has been cleaned up and I should go check it out. So that's what we're going to go do today. So join me as Jacksoft to Salinas. Let's go. Well, well, so it has been cleaned up. Let me show you guys how it looks now. So compared to last time, it's a lot more cleaned up, although, you know, it's not the best, but check it out. This time we'll give it a proper video. So over here, we have me, Cantina. So keep in mind, back then, even though this was Chinatown, it wasn't just the Chinese people here. There were Mexicans, Blacks, and Japanese here. Look at this, the chop suey. Used to be a restaurant here. And last week I learned what a chop suey is. For the longest time I had no idea what chop suey is. It's basically you get whatever ingredients and you stir fry it. That's chop suey right here. Look at this. Old buildings with graffiti on now. And then you got a La Preta Negra. So probably a bar or something back then. Well, you know what? I want to shoot a proposal. You know, my name is Mark Davis. You know, I, I don't represent represent that, that uh, the Asian community, but I do represent you know, every other ethnic background. I am from Salinas, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of historical facts, a lot of these places, you know, are being demolished, thrown in the garbage. And these places are, I mean, they represent our town, you know, their, their history, they're like um, national map marks or whatever so like the next time you know i'm my proposal is to slap a mural on the wall you know and then take and then instead of discarding it the mural uh, put it up for an auction or something just to save it as a piece of history you know mm -hmm. just like john steinbeck john steinbeck talks about these places i mean it's it's been it's notorious you know i mean and then you have you know people like it, it gave the like the gangsters a whole different rate you know of some value and some morals like hey man you know i mean you got a lot of these people out here and you got people that are originally out here that know how to survive and adapt to their situation you know mm -hmm. and um it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, they got to survive too, you know, at the same time, you got to go with the time, you know, I mean, everything evolves, nothing stays the same, you know, right. but you want to save a little piece of history so you know your facts, hey, look, boom, this is where it came from, you know, and it's always been black, brown, white, or any, I mean, as long as we're, as a community, we can all do come together, it's a good thing, it's a beautiful thing, you know? oh yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what I'm thinking, you say it's because you're Asian, you could you could push that go to city hall and be like hey man look who owns this building what do you think about this you know and you know and get a really good artist bam stop it on there that's right you know what what do you think you know because look that building right there that burned down mm -hmm. it could have paid for this structure for this structure this structure i mean look at that i get that right there love will set us free because that that says so much right there love does set us free you know i mean mm -hmm. someone focused on love not just love alone mm -hmm. you know it does i mean it opens doors all right we're good we're good there <laughs> right? Mike. i believe in the same shit. yeah <laughs> right but yeah for sure you know corner building in the bottom it's the gallery and you'll see all pictures of tiny town do you know if it's open today um, I don't know. There might be a note on there. There might be t a schedule. I don't cool. know. Okay, we'll go check it out. Yeah, right. you're going to love it. Beautiful pictures. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. You guys have a nice day. You too. I'll check it out. They got faucet system over here. Pretty cool. You know, sanitized. And then you got a sweet sing building right there. Let's check it out. What's up, dog? Sweet sing building. Check it out. So Ying Good Luck Bowl, here's the club area. And then you have the So Sing Gong Shan Zi so the actual Yeah, cash only the association right here. And then this looks like the the Filipino flag. I'll get into that in a little bit. And then you got new apartments over here in the midst of all the chaos. And then Right here, got the Bing Dong Tong. Let's take a closer look. So you might be wondering, what were the Chinese people doing here in Salinas? Well, aside from mining gold and building railroads, the Chinese people were hired to do hard labor. 
And here in the Salinas Valley, it's like miles and miles of agriculture land. And agriculture was hard labor. So a lot of Chinese people were hired here to work on the farms. And it wasn't just Chinese people. If you look that way, right there, that used to be Japantown, but no longer. And then it wasn't just Chinese and Japanese. It was also the Filipinos. It was the Mexicans and the Blacks. So this was a very interesting Chinatown with a lot of history. And actually at one point, Salinas' Chinatown was the largest Chinatown between San Francisco and LA. Picture that and look at it now. All right, so the lovely lady earlier told us there was a gallery here and check it out. You got a chop suey sign right here. It's, it's here, but it's closed today, I think. And look, got a little timeline here, the Filipino PI market. So yeah, the Filipinos were here too. Like I've mentioned in my previous Salinas video. And look at this, look at this handsome guy here with the big, <laughs> big pipe. The Hop Sing Long, or the Lok, Long Hop, Lok Sing Hop, man. But check this out, the Sao Sing Gong San Wei. We didn't see this earlier, it's probably demolished already. And look, three handsome Asian dudes. Could have been me and Coach and 350. <laughs> <laughs> Salinas Police. And check it out. The Asian Cultural Experience. So it was this group that reached out to me. And then uh, I'll put the link to the YouTube channel. They have some pretty cool videos of like oral history too. And look at this. Latino business in Chinatown. So yeah. It was a very culturally diverse place. It wasn't just exclusively Chinese people like most Chinatowns. So this was a very interesting Chinatown. So if you have the chance, make sure you come down here when it's open. I'll try to find the information on when it's open and I'll put it in the description too. All right, so last time we were here, I showed you guys the Hikari apartments and also the street sign right here, the Tam O Wong Wei, Wong Sang Duk Lo. So I did some research on this Tom Wong character and who is this Tom Wong person? So, Tom Wong was a Chinese guy born in Toisan and in his early 20s, his dad sent him here to the US here in Salinas to work in the Salinas laundry. Um, aside from working in the laundry, he was also studying and he figured out a way to get into UC Berkeley. Damn right. Well, unfortunately, it was also during the time of World War II, so he also got drafted into the Army Corps of Engineers. And keep in mind, during World War II, China and the US, they were allies. So he had a chance to work with the engineers in China. Well, long story short, that's how he met his wife, Frances. And after the war, Tom and Frances, they moved back here to Salinas to settle down. And that's where he became very active in the Chinese community. But he also worked for the city. So he was serving the people of Salinas too. Well, in 2012, Tom passed away at the long age of 96. And they dedicated a street to him right there. One of the only Chinese streets I know. So yeah, that's the story of good old Tom Wong. So that's pretty much it for Salinas' Chinatown, but there's one more place I want to go to. It'll be a short drive, so let's head over there right now. Let's go. All right, so we've made it to Castroville, and the reason why I wanted to come here is because of the school right here, the Castroville Japanese schoolhouse and check it out Kodomo no Tamini, which means for the kids and this is a huge exhibit and tells you about the history oh right here for the sake of the children I'm trying to flex my Japanese but it says right here in English but anyways it tells you about the history of the Japanese community here in Castroville and let's just go through the exhibit real quick but you do want to come here in person to get the you know full experience not the jack-off version so it tells you the early days of Castroville how the town was founded and when the Japanese came in the 1880s replacing the Chinese who were excluded in 1882 and then right here the 1940s to the present when they got sent to concentration camps World War II and good thing is this schoolhouse will be used again for kids so good for them all right let's do a super quick tour you want to go counterclockwise and check it out you got some description here you got pictures you got letters written by kids to tell them how they feel. And the reason why the schoolhouse was built was because even though the Japanese people were living here in the US, they wanted their kids to learn about the Japanese culture and their language too. You know, kind of like 
when I was a little kid, I went to Chinese school in Chinatown. I had to learn Cantonese and some of the Chinese culture too. And check it out, life in Castroville, right here. So like I said, I'm giving you guys the hose down version just because of YouTube and yeah, so Force From Home, it tells you about the rodeo grounds here in Salinas. It was actually served as one of the concentration camps. They call it the detention center, but it's actually a concentration camp, right? And check it out. Pictures of uncertainty right here, little kids. And we have more exhibit right here. Leaving the camp, life in the camp. And look at this picture right here. This looks like a concentration camp straight up, right? Ain't no detention center. And what is this? The relocation center, Poston, Arizona. Must be hot as hell too. And then we got one more right here. After the war, you know, moving on, when they came back, a lot of the Japanese people, they lost everything. So they didn't know what to do. So the good thing is the government did acknowledge that this was a huge mistake. So people were compensated. So it's the time to move forward. And hopefully we don't repeat the same mistake again. All right, so today we visited Salinas' Chinatown and also the Castroville Japanese Schoolhouse. And it's very interesting learning about the history of both the early Japanese and Chinese history because they're very similar, right? They came here, they tried to work hard for a better future, they got discriminated, but their fates really diverged because of World War II. For the Japanese Americans, they got sent to concentration camps. When they came back, they lost their community. As for the Chinese, because of the situation where China and the U.S. were allies, the Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed and they get to keep their community. So when you look at the Japan towns nowadays, it's more like a tourist attraction, whereas Chad towns are still like very active Chinese communities. Except for Salinas though, you know, <laughs> it used to be, but no longer. But what will happen to the Japanese and Chinese Americans today? Well, only time will tell as history is continuous. And as for now, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, Jack's off.